Buenos dias. Como esta? It is Kai Pacha with the weekly Pele Report, September 16th of the year 2020. And some of you like this. I, you know, we're, we're having the sun and moon both in Virgo, which is analytical, detail-oriented. We're going to look at the actual charts today. And as I, as I walk you through this week, some of you like that, some of you don't. <laughs> Here we, you can see that we have the moon, uh, you know, right now, or at least five o'clock this morning. It was, uh, you know, at 10 degrees of Virgo. And on Thursday, very early in the morning in Costa Rica, anyway, we have a new moon in Virgo at 25 degrees, zero minutes. The sun is still moving away from that opposition with Neptune that we had a few days ago. So the moon is staying right there. And you can see that this, the, the lines are not drawn in, but this new moon is in square to the moon's nodes. You see these moon's nodes. I want to talk about this today because this is very powerful. This is what our mantra is really based a lot upon today is the south node of the moon in Sagittarius always exactly opposite the north node of the moon, which is now down here in Gemini. And they're at 24 degrees. It's almost an exact square to 25 degrees. It's like 29 minutes away from being exactly square, these moon's nodes. And of course, these moon's nodes move very slowly. They're going to be squaring Neptune pretty much for uh, definitely the rest of the year and into next year. So this is another thing that we can discuss. This is called the mutable cross. These are the mutable signs, Pisces, Gemini, Virgo, and Sagittarius. Mutable, changeable, adaptable. We're going to really look at that particular dynamic that's going on. In the meantime, let's also just see that this, in this new moon is also, look at these trines, beautiful triangles with the blue lines coming right up here to Capricorn. Virgo is an earth sign. Capricorn is an earth sign. Taurus is an earth sign. <laughs> okay, these are our three earth signs. 17, 22, 25, 25, 27. Again, very, very tight. So by Thursday, let's just go on one more day. Boop, you know, we have this exact trine of the sun to Saturn. In addition to that, Mercury has moved up. We can move this back a little bit. Yeah, Mercury in square to Jupiter. And Mercury moves about a degree a day. Watch, I'm going to go forward a few days here. Mercury goes 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So, you know, through this week, you can see that Mercury is going to square Jupiter, square Pluto, square Saturn, okay, from the sign of Libra over here to Capricorn. So the exact square of that Mercury to uh, Jupiter is on Thursday. And then on Sunday, we have the exact square to Pluto. And it'll be next week's report where we can, it will still be in square to Saturn. You see that one. What else I want to talk about here today uh, that is part of, uh, you know, part of the dynamic of what's happening here is Venus. Look, well, let's watch over here at Venus. Here's Venus moving through Leo, right? And it's called a yod. Yeah? Come on. Where are we going? There you can see now Venus, this dashed line is 150 degrees. It's called a quincunx or an inconjunct. And the next day, next Monday, there's another one coming over here to Neptune. And Neptune and Jupiter are in this sextile. And this is going to go on for Monday and by Tuesday we can see that Venus is at 18. Now, the, the point, okay, of, yeah, this is like a slingshot. I always call, this is called a yod. It's called the finger of God, <laughs> a yod. When two planets are in conjunct, okay, and 
the opposite the opposite point this slingshot we want to take venus and shoot her right through the middle in between jupiter and neptune that midpoint is a very powerful midpoint i may read the sabian symbol for it today there's just so much to share with you today but it is the 19th degree of aquarius and yeah it's a symbol of the forest fires burning it's, it's, and, and and the need to put those out and it was just phenomenal to me that the sabian symbol related so concretely so perfect perfectly to what is going on in uh the western states and also the amazon yeah so that is uh that is uh, another thing that we may also be talking about and then of course by next week doing doing the sun moves into libra <laughs> we have the equinox equal day equal night okay and that too is also this you know coming into a particular balance prior to that i don't know how many aspects i want to hammer you with but you can also see that the sun is in this in conjunct quincunx aspect to mars and that is going on particularly powerfully you know right on through the weekend yeah saturday and sunday you can see mercury is moving into an opposition i'll probably be talking more about that next week because it's not exact until you know until after this pele report so moon moving through from the new moon in virgo on thursday she goes into libra on thursday after hitting the new moon and then stays in libra until saturday okay uh mercury moon opposite mars okay ay 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 okay in a bit of a square here as you can see with the jupiter pluto saturn this is called the t square that may also enter into my conversation with you today okay and then she goes into scorpio basically saturday and sunday and into monday and then she moves into sagittarius um uh on uh on monday uh and tuesday wednesday yeah so first quarter moon okay the moon is going from new to square that's called the first quarter moon she's going to be a little sliver in the night sky and she's going to grow 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 to be a half moon by next wednesday so let me look at the camera and talk to you a little bit more about what this all means okay okay everybody i don't know how you are feeling but these are i'm feeling very intense deep uh transformational changes going on in many different levels inwardly and outwardly but primarily inwardly let's think about this virgo the moon is now in virgo it's a balsamic phase which is reflecting, finishing, closing, completing this month long cycle all through August, preparing for a new seed to be born with this new moon on Thursday. And like I, I showed you the aspects of that moon, sun moon. And, you know, Virgo is part of this mutable cross that has so much to do with well it's ruled by mercury gemini is also ruled by mercury and it has to do with truth and illusion jupiter is the ruler of sagittarius and before they discovered neptune jupiter was the ruler of pisces so we have this Mercury ruling Gemini and Virgo and Jupiter <laughs> who had, that just turned direct, right, recently. So now Jupiter is, you know, moving forward again. It's time to make progress. And we have this whole process going on with the moon's nodes taking truth, truth. What is truth? 
And is truth changing or is there a objective, universal, unchangeable truth? Or is the truth just my truth and your truth? And, you know, whether uh, the virus is a conspiracy or a reality or we wear masks or we don't or there's racial inequality or there is not or there is the need for blah, blah. Uh, uh, there is so much going on right now about fake news. Uh, can we trust science? Is this a hoax or is this reality? Ba, 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 ba. This is all about, this is all this process of initiation of what 2020 is bringing forward to us. As we come from Sagittarius to Gemini, it's bringing our beliefs. What do we believe? And are, is what we believe true or false? Are we living an illusion? Are we living, are we self-deluded illusions of grandeur? Are we deluding ourselves? That, you know, climate change is a hoax. I just, you know, I'm reading all these, you know, I'm maybe reading too much news. <laughs> but the largest shelf of Greenland just broke off into the sea. So, you know, it's you know, the, the ice tundra of Greenland is just like to a point of no return. Uh, the Amazon rainforest is at a tipping point of no return, of no longer being a rainforest. There's 29,000 fires occurring in the Amazon forest right now. We've lost millions of acres just in California of, to fire. There are five hurricanes in the Atlantic Ocean at the same time. This is only the second time in history that there have been five hurricanes in the, the Atlantic Ocean at the same time since we have been keeping track of these types of things. So there's definitely, okay, I mean, I, I could probably go on and on. I'm just looking at some of, okay, you know, these events that are occurring. I'm sure there are more. So science, science is Aquarius, but natural law and what is occurring, you know, you know, with all of this, I want to read to you, okay, the, the, the pointing of the finger of God, okay, and this is, let's, uh, let me go into the astrology of it, Venus is moving away from Neptune, it's a 150 degree aspect, and that is, Venus is the lower octave of Neptune. Neptune is universal spiritual love. Venus is physical earthly love. How the soul connects to the physical body. It has to do with money. It has to do with attraction. It has to do with our inner ability to receive. It's the ruler of Taurus, which has to do with resources and our ability to survive and feed ourselves, clothe ourselves, shelter ourselves. So Venus is a very earthly goddess, very sensuous, very physical aspect to Venus. Breaking away, breaking out of this infinite fantasy, potential, or dream the 150 degree aspect is a breaking away. Like the student breaking away from the teacher. It's like a graduation, it's a change, but it's uncomfortable. It is this kind of initiation type of a change occurring. And that 150 degree is associated with Virgo, right? So we have this breaking out of illusions into the realities. Then we have Venus breaking away farther from Jupiter. Jupiter, okay, she is, you know, come all the way around from Jupiter. It's 150 degree the other way, okay? So it's actually 210 degrees, which is associated with Scorpio. And this quincunx aspect has to do again with 
the loss of control and the desire or the need to maintain and hold control. So Venus, Jupiter, let's look at Venus, Jupiter. Jupiter expands, opens, it's more, more, more. It's the planet of abundance, prosperity, and more. Venus is sugar, sweetness of life, okay, financial, money, survival. So it is this, you know, again, this is a powerful, okay, quincunx in conjunct aspect of Venus to Jupiter. So Jupiter, Neptune, Venus, okay, this is like a coming to terms of the earthly reality versus perhaps our notions of prosperity and abundance and what you know what is possible or what we went for or materialism okay and you know greed okay you know hoarding gathering too much or too you know and then breaking away from neptune and so what do we have here with this you know with this fickle finger of fate <laughs> That oppositional point, okay, the Sabian symbol, again, is a forest fire is being subdued by the use of water, chemicals, and sheer muscular energy. The keynote is the skill and courage necessary to bring under control the destructive potential of carelessness, of karmic visitations super powerful Sabian symbol we can look at water as being emotions uh, maybe the chemicals as being you know uh, the the analytical thinking and muscular so this is you know mind emotion and physical you know using all of our powers all of our forces Okay, to contain, to control. This is just like what I'm saying. That, you know, this year is this year of, you know, separating out what is true from what is false. What is conspiracy versus what is reality. So that we can get a grip and come out of all forms of illusions and delusions and ground ourselves and deal with the realities of yeah our phenomenal existence in this third dimensional material world so let me read about what he's got to say forest fires may be caused by human carelessness by lightning or by the byproducts of modern technology every individual at least once in his lifetime if not repeatedly may perhaps have to face spectacular reactions to seemingly insignificant acts these are to be considered means to test his strength ingenuity and or emotional stability every faculty at his disposal must be made use of emotional mental and physical he needs faith in himself and in superior powers and here we are shown man in action in a crucial and potentially devastating situation there is need for a total mobilization of energy and a deep sense of indomitability. We will not be dominated. This is another aspect of this Chiron in Aries, of how potent, of how powerful, of how capable we are. And this is the sun trining Saturn, and all of this going on in Saturn, in the sign of Capricorn, Saturn is the test, the taskmaster. 
And Capricorn, Saturn rules Capricorn. It is the authority, the boundaries, laws, and rules as they are established in a physical form. It's the law, the law enforcement, the police, the governments, the World Health Organization, the CDC, the blah, 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 who's, you know, I mean, it's even, it's all of the institutions, yes, Amazon and, you know, the corporations and, I mean, this whole cluster, okay, the pharmaceutical companies, these big corporations, I mean, this is just, this is a very powerful year of testing, we are being tested individually and we are being tested collectively how we can process our inner mental emotional and physical needs within relationship partnership business and survive as well as how we can work together to conquer Okay, this external enemy of COVID and, and these fires and these hurricanes and all of the natural, the raising of the sea level. And I mean, it's just, it's like we are really being tested. This is a time where we are facing ourselves. We're facing our limitations. The world is changing. These are karmic times. These are karmic periods. What you know, it's all coming back to us. Yes, in so many ways, what we have done, whether it's a manufactured pandemic, okay, or whether it is a you know a virus from bats and Mother Nature being stressed, one way or the other, right? There is a dis-ease. We are out of alignment, out of ease with nature, spirit, source. And of course, this is bringing up, it's time for us, this can be an evolutionary leap in consciousness. We are seeing ourselves and we are evolving and growing as we see and we become more aware of our issues, of our traumas, of our wounds, of our fears. We see ourselves more clearly, personally and collectively. I want to, you know, the, the Pele Report is the astrology for the soul. So I want to look at this a little bit more in the personal way. I've made the mantra as a personal mantra that we can each say to ourselves. And that is, and here we come into the mutable cross. I want to tie this all together. And this is what we're saying is, as we evolve, our needs change. Our beliefs change. What I used to believe in. I was raised Catholic. I'm no longer Catholic. Okay, I have a different belief system now with astrology and source and uh, divine intelligence and meditation and yoga. Things have, you know, really moved and shifted and changed. We all change. We don't want the same things. Our desires are born out of our beliefs. I believe that this is important. I believe that this is going to last. I believe that this is going to make me happy. This relationship or this job, this career. Well, okay, you know, it's like maybe like, you know, a lot of guys want to be firemen when they're 10 years old. I want, you know, being a fireman is going to, you know, that's, you know, I mean, and, and, and as we grow, our needs change, our beliefs change. As we wisen up, as we mature, as we have relationships and people interact with us and mirror us, we become more aware of our emotional needs, our sexual needs, our physical needs, our mental, you know, it's, so all of these needs become more conscious.
I've been saying for a long time, right? You know, life is the process of making the unconscious conscious. And this process is a process of change, of evolution. And that change in evolution says, okay, you know, uh, maybe a rocking horse made me happy when I was three. A rocking horse is not going to make me happy when I'm 25. <laughs> right? You know, what was my first job? You know, I, was, uh, I used to deliver papers. I had a paper route, okay, you know, you know and, I, and I made some money. And that was, you know, it's like my first, it's like, you know, when we're, you know, I mean, so our jobs change. And our relationships Okay, when I'm in my 20s, I have different sexual, emotional experiences, needs, wants, fantasies. I live these out. I feel them. I get rejected or I reject. I, you know, I take. I re we do all of this exchange. We have this, you know, partner, that partner. We, you know, we experiment. We grow. We learn. And, and so all of this necessitates awareness necessitates change and change necessitates an inner emotional self security and self reliance and this is where we are now with this new moon in virgo it's an earth sign it is analyzing categorizing integrating my beliefs with my ideas, with my emotions, with my physical reality, and even my physical health. So this month, this new moon sets the tone for this entire month. And this whole month is really going to be, you know, each of us really working at and looking at. I encourage a lot of reflection, you know, therapy, counseling, talking, this moon is moving through Scorpio, okay, you know, interacting, using partners as the sun goes into Libra, using our relationships and partnerships to illuminate what is the source of inner peace, joy, happiness, contentment, it's doing the right thing. It is admitting maybe that I was wrong or admitting maybe that I need something that I don't have and I'm not going to find it on Netflix or on Facebook or, you know, distractions. This whole lockdown, you know, is this whole energy of look at your life look at yourself look at what you have created you know and go inward north node of pluto north node of saturn north node of jupiter all in cancer <laughs> my innermost feelings so this is, you know, what's going to come out of this is tremendous, alert, awake, clarity, who I am, what I want, where I'm going, what I need to do to get there. This is your 2021 and beyond. We're going to, you know... Saturn's going to go direct. Pluto's going to go direct. You know, this month, things are going to start moving forward. Mars will go direct in November, and things are going to, you know, so just get this sense that, yeah, we're in some of the toughest, you know, this retrograde Mars is, you know, some of the most uncomfortable conditions that we are going to experience. We are experiencing through September, October, and November. And we're closing that 20-year Jupiter-Saturn cycle. That new Jupiter-Saturn conjunction right on the solstice is going to set us off in a whole new way. And so this is a time of great enlightenment, of testing and checking 
how together or not we are so that we know what we need to do, say, go, or work at in order to get ourselves all together. Come together. That's our song for this week. <laughs> the Beatles come together right now. So, you know, the, the mantra for this week, I am constantly meeting myself and my changing needs as I grow. If I'm not honest and willing to admit my truth, I will never know. This is the need to bring these Sagittarius, our various belief systems. Oh, I believe this, or I believe that, or I believe the other thing. Da, 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 da. You can believe whatever you want, but when you come down to Gemini in the third house, it's be here now. What's right in front of the tip of your nose? Gemini is right here. Sagittarius can be over the hill and far away. <laughs> Okay, you know, what is beyond and the, the, the philosophical wanderings and meanderings and, uh, you know, uh, theories. Gemini, it's what is going to get us through this time, this conversation, this Mercury aspect. We can also change this mantra and, and, and look at it in another way, collectively. Yes? We are constantly meeting ourselves and our changing needs as we grow. If we are not honest and willing to admit the truth, we will never know. <laughs> this is where, and I just want to give a little plug to science true science and scientists and it's almost like i want to uh, i want to reach out and when 90 percent of the world's scientists agree <laughs> okay that you know the temperature is rising and there is global warming and climate change you know it's like let's look at what you know the vast majority there was one other point I wanted to make regarding this. It's like, I know I'm going on, but whatever. You know, the, here's the thing. I need a car to get to work. I live a long way away from work. And I can say, oh my God, that car dealer is going to make a whole bunch of money on my, you know, it's, he's just trying to sell cars to make money. So forget that, you know, it's, it, you know it, it, it's like no matter what, whether it's Amazon or Tesla or any, you know, anything that we want to do, somebody is going to make a profit. People make profits, people in order to survive. There is profit. The profit motive is behind very much of business. Is that to say that I should not buy a car because this guy's going to make a profit? You know, people are trying to sell the green deal like it's some kind of a scam. Like it's just, you know, they just want to make money on carbon reduction. So, you know, these corporations are going to profit, okay, by, uh, you know, da -da 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 -da. so should we not? do anything about the rising temperatures on planet Earth because individuals or corporations are going to profit from our uh, uh, work or our uh, survival? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You know, the pharmaceutical companies are going to profit on a vaccine. Does that mean that we should not take a vaccine? I mean, yeah, yes. So I want to just like, I want to discount this idea, okay, that, you know, because, you know, it's there's a plan or because somebody is, you know, that we should just rebel against 
uh, anything because somebody is trying to profit from us. Because no matter what we do or don't do, someone will be profiting from us. The question is who and what are the long-term effects on our children and their children and their children. So to rebel against something because it's going to cost us or because somebody is uh, greedy or because there's bad people that are, uh, you know, going to make money on it. Um, yeah, there's, there's going to be bad people making money on just about anything is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> you know, I, yeah. yeah. I know, I get lots of people, they're going to give me a hard time. You know, you should not talk about politics. I was reading this other article. <laughs> How, you know, politics is becoming more about culture. And it's more about beliefs now. And, and do we believe that there's racial equality or do we believe that, uh, you know, uh, you know, that there is, the, you know, this, uh, um, you know, inequality, that there is this lie or this untruth or da, da, da. it's it's not even so much about policy or about you know, it's like politics is turned into a cultural, uh, you know, there are diverging cultural views uh, religious and otherwise, uh, you know, and different belief systems are now, you know, kind of politics is more about what we believe than it ever has been before in all previous elections. I'm just talking about the United States election and how the, the people, the, the, you know, the Trumps and the, the, the Republicans have beliefs about equality and immigration and uh you know law and order that are you know and these are these are beliefs right and and the, the democrats and the you know the you know about uh, racial equality and belief systems and change and lgbtq and you know gender the and, and that, that these are becoming it's yeah it's a very interesting dynamic so it's, you know, basically coming more as we, you know, what's really going to bring people together with this unity in diversity that is this age of Aquarius is objectivity, maturity, objectivity, and science can be objective, the, the objective phenomena Okay, that there are now 400 dead zones in our oceans. If you go around the world, there are 400 dead zones. This is an objective truth that we don't need to argue about. We can all agree on objective realities that are brought to us through science. I'm going to really, you know, go for and back up Aquarius, Uranus. Uranus is moving through Taurus. This is science regarding our resources and planet Earth and physical survival. Uranus is there until 2026. So we've got, you know, six more years to, you know, really figure out if we are going to survive as a species. There are one million species that are on the very verge of extinction right now. So, you know, we're, this Virgo new moon, these Virgo brings in critical crisis, critical situations that requires critical thinking and critical adjustments whether it's more exercise or nutrition or uh, you know you know changes in your work routine or da, 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 it, this is the mutable cross is this is a month where we really can make tremendous forward progress towards knowing our own personal truth and objective Reality. Virgo is all about objective reality. 
one more time. I am constantly meeting myself and my changing needs as I grow. If I'm not honest and willing to admit my truth, I will never know. Speak our truths. Mercury in Libra, sun going into Libra, air sign, communication, Mercury squaring, Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn. You know, these are critical conversations with our partners, with our loved ones, with, you know, if you're living in isolation by yourself, you know, it's like, you know, internal conversations but let's admit you know as as we just admit okay i i did this i did not do that i i'm strong at this i'm weak at that i'm good at that i'm lousy at that i'm that i'm just but, but it's just like really coming into facing our selves our truth so there you go <laughs> wow what a Namaste. Aloha. So much love.